I tell you what, I, I, just in terms of athletics in general, the move to the whack if there are any questions for Louisiana Tech, they've been answered now. Your guys, you've stepped it up, and your guys, you're not only competing, you're contending for titles first year. Fresno State wearing the dark uniforms. Louisiana Tech in white. Fresno State will control the tip. Here's Mitchell. going to show some man-to-man. They're going to go right down inside to Eli to try to get the big fell involved. And they'll come the other way quickly. Lavelle Felty. Anderson. A little bit of that ame amoeba matchup zone. Well, Tark is famous for that. Meeking on the inside. Can't get it. Eli had it saved. He got it back. Well, Louisiana Tech really showing no shame. Going right down inside. Going right at Melvin Eli. That will belong to Fresno State. Fresno State 18 and 13 on the year. 9 and 9 in conference play. Away from home. Just 5 and 7. Now they're going to give it to Louisiana Tech. Tark can't believe it. He is up. This is about as upset as Coach yeah. gets these days. We don't see him uh, ranting and raving very much. <laughs> he should have the respect where he doesn't need to do that. Henderson Alley, oop, doesn't get it. To call with the easy deuce. Well, Louisiana Tech gets you Fresno kind of pulling out on that zone, coming out a little bit too high, and they slip Cole in behind. He's able to get the lob. Eli, tough shot. Rebounded by Lock Tech. Leading 2 0. Things about a minute gone by here in the first. And there's Marco Cole on the glass. We said that was going to be a key for them. Marco Cole able to get there. Had 13 rebounds last meeting. Dalton just popping out. Mitchell at 5'10 trying to guard him. Gives up a lot of inches. The three on the way. Long shot, long rebound. Rule number one in basketball. But the deuce will go down this time. That's right. You follow the shot. And old Felix doesn't get the block out. Henderson able to slip right in. Get his put back. That's Rod Henderson, the 6'4 senior out of Haynesville, Louisiana, with his first two. We're talking about limiting the touches of Eli. He has had one so far. Well, man, they came down. They don't like to get the ball to Eli because he can pass. If you go over and double team, he will find his teammates on perimeter. Louisiana Tech doing an excellent job of just collapsing on that Fresno State offense. They only give up 67 points a game, and their opponents only shoot 41%. Yeah, and in those eight losses, Ron, they've, they've, they've given up more than 70. It's when they've, they've not been solid defensively is when they've struggled. But Louisiana Tech really working now, trying to keep the ball out of the lane. Only well, four to shoot, but they turn it over anyway. Henderson, take it coast to coast, finger roll, no. And it'll belong to Fresno State. And that's what Gerard Henson loves to do. He loves to get out in transition, try to get the easy ones. He'll step back and shoot that triple every now and again, but he loves to get out in transition and run. Here's Matt Mitchell making only his seventh start. The freshman out of Atlanta, Georgia. We'll try from the outside, the long three, nothing but the bottom of the net for Travis Demanby. Nice little pass kick out there from Damon Jackson. Demanby spots up. Says, thank you very much. I'll take it. Not a good percentage-wide shooter from three. Probably because he takes so many. 152 on the year. Well, important that he made that, too, because he oh, yeah. down Melvin Eli on the box. He's 0-2. Cole lets the floater right-hander go. Tipped around. It'll belong to Louisiana Tech with a fresh 35 on the shot clock. How important, though, is it for Fresno State to try to show some emotion? Keep the sharp recharge team. We know we're going to do that. Fresno State knows what is on the line here. They basically have nothing to lose, but don't they need to come out a little more emotional what we're saying right now? Yeah, you know, the, both teams kind of seem a little bit, uh, kind of like they're thinking a little too much, but uh, and that'll loosen up. But uh, Fresno is certainly not playing with a great deal of emotion here early. Cole flips up the prayer. It will not be answered, but we do have a whistle and a foul. That'll go against... Louisiana Tech. See, nice little pump fake there as Cole goes to glass. Kind of feels he was. He's bumped by Eli. Well, when you're the player of the year. Yeah. Okay. yeah you, get, you get those. <laughs> foul was on Meeking, by the way. His first first team foul. And first overall in the ball game. Just a look at Cole. So had something in my eye. I didn't see that. <laughs> the Mambi will try another three. This time the rebound will be tracked down by Lavelle Felton, the junior out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And we're just going to take our chances launching up threes. Mitchell looks to push it as Jackson on the left. Demandy is third. Second miss. Demandy had it and lost it. One good job, Cole, in there on the glass again. Felton one on four. Tries to take it himself inside. Meeking, though. 
again, no. Mitchell had it, lost it. We got a scrum jump ball belongs to Louisiana Tech on the possession arrow. Hey, you love that, guys. Getting on the floor. Look, Mom, I got the uniform dirty. Got the play tonight. And again, we talked about Louisiana Tech's ability to get the offensive boards, and they get to the offensive boards in the previous meetings. And here early, now not able to convert them right now, but they're getting to that offensive glass. Great job, Hustle meeting down on the floor. But if you're Keith Richard, you can't be pleased if one of your guys taking a one on three. That's great. Yeah, you like, you like your point guard to make a little better decision. There's no question. We've got a timeout because the inbounds having trouble difficulty getting in, courtesy of the Fresno State defense. 30 second timeout. Let's talk about Jerry Tarkanian. He will not play. I've had the pleasure of knowing Jerry for a lot of years. He is not going to play on the fact, Ryan, that this might be his last game. He wants to win because it gets him in the semifinals, period. Exactly. You know, he's a classic coach, guy who's you know, shaped college basketball, really been one of the pioneers of shaped college basketball to what it is today. But, uh, you know, certainly the way his club is playing, you'd have thought that they'd be the ones attacking the lane, trying to score in the pain, and they've been the ones really pushed out the perimeter. And La Tech now the one really taking it to the rim right now aggressively. Fresno averages about 23 pointers a game. Louisiana set 15. Demandy has already taken three. He has made one. That's the one he made. And, and again, you know, he's not good. He's a, that's a good point. 23 feet. Yeah. Certainly when you have the in Fresno State, you want your offense to come from close and rest. Tries to fight through a pick. So does Henderson. Shot is going to be controlled by Mustafa El Sayed. Demandy. Can't give him any room. Gives it up to Mitchell. Go to the big fella. Inside. Cop. No, no basket. Foul before the shot. Well, right there's a perfect example, Ron, of why Melvin Eli has got to touch the basketball. Right. When the ball goes inside, you can see Louisiana Tech will react to it. They're coming to trap, and he lobs it right over to El Sayed for the easy one. Got the foul called on the floor, though. Foul is on Henderson. Eli way out front. Oh, the little burst spin dribble. move. Mitchell drops the two and buries it. Just inside the lane for the deuce. Well, last weekend in the last meeting, Eli with five assists, and he, he, he is a terrific passer. Nice little reverse spin there on the dribble. Finds his teammate for a jumper. Truly one of the best big men in the country. The best center, and they're going to whack. No question. Henderson looking for Felton, throws it to Brian Riley. <laughs> <laughs> Riley's showing no hands. Nah, I can't play anymore. That's why I'm over here. Inside, they turn it over. Third turnover already for Louisiana Tech, who averages about 14. Mitchell looks to force it. That's going to be an offensive foul. Now, Mitchell, you have got to stay under control in this situation. Well, terrific job down here defensively. Fresno kind of picking up the heat defensively. But when you get in transition, you get your chance in transition. You've got to make a better decision. 15-38 left to play in the first half. And Fresno State beats by it one. These people may have little in common, except that they rode through dozens of states for thousands of miles, raising $24 million in one event for the United Way, the most in its history. Another thing they have in common is the company they work for. But the most important thing they have in common is they prove that by working together, ordinary people can do extraordinary things. It's where academics count. It's where athletes count. It's where alumni count. Count it all up, and you'll have a crystal clear picture of what we believe, who we are, and what we do. Our purpose, our focus, our passion. Celebrating 40 years of the Western Athletic Conference. Where actions count. Tech, normally a very good shooting basketball team at about 40%, but they're 2 of 12 here in the early going. Fresno State 2 of 6, and you can see a little 17% to 33%. 
I'm going to go out on a limb, Brad. I'm going to say it's going to be a lot better by the end of the first half. <laughs> I know. You're or it's going to be a lot longer game. No. It'll be one or the other, my friend. <laughs> That's right. 20 to 19. Pitcher's duel right now. <laughs> Dribbling around, going nowhere very quickly. Well, Fresno stepped up the intensity now on the defensive end. Back on top. Cole. Hands it off. They go inside. Miki off the glass. No offensive foul on Miki. That'll be his second personal foul. Now Keith Richard's going to have to make a, a decision here. A nice job, Melvin Eli sliding over, getting in front of Miki. Instead of pulling up and shooting the J, he tries to shoot the little leaner. And Eli, maybe a little bit, uh, well, maybe not for this year's Oscars, but maybe next year you get a little Best Actor nomination. But <laughs> nice Thank job coming over and helping. Fresno State needs to take advantage of every break they get to Eli has to give it up. Jackson launches the three and makes the three. Damon Jackson is 78th three of the year. Well, he's definitely, Damon Jackson definitely stepping it up with the injury to Jeffries. But again, I, you know, I hate to just drill it home, but Melvin Eli just a terrific pass from the opposite box, just hit him in the chest with it. They've got to take advantage of that at the offensive end. Felton floats the right hander, count the basket, and we have a foul. A lot of times against zones, the one, two dribble drives. You don't want to get all the way into that size of, of Fresno, but the one, two dribble drive right here, one dribble, works for Felton, gets into the hole in that zone, forces Fresno to come over and help, and they foul, jump shooter. Boy, that's, that's Cardinal Sin, isn't it? Fouling a jump shooter? Yeah, never foul the jump shooter. No. Well, so you went to five star, you know, you, <laughs> ah, that's still a Huey Brown camp. <laughs> Well, we get our first look at Chris Sandy. Yes, checked him a lot of bullets. It took him about five minutes to get in. Eli still looking for his first points of the game. Cole just has to hand it off to Gerard Henderson. Looking inside, the reverse, no. Rebound, Eli. Fans wanted a foul, not going to get it. Well, I think they, Fresno got away with one there. Syed, a little bit too heavy on the con contest as Jackson turns it over. Fourth turnover for Jerry Tarkanian's. Fresno State Bulldogs. The towel's not out yet, though. Tark didn't have a towel yet. I tell you what, they're about a couple turnovers away from it. Fits you a hole in that thing. But that's kind of been their MO. They just have a tendency to turn it over a little too much. Shoot themselves in the foot. Nice job defensively, Fresno State covering up. From deep outside, the three won't go. Rebound, pushing around, hit the shot clock. So we're going to go the other way. Gerard Henderson is not afraid to jack up that shot. No, that one was a fadeaway, folks, in 20. But again, that Fresno D, the time you dribble that baseline, they're going to come over and double-team you, force you to kick it out, and then they're going to try and get you on the closeout. And Henderson tries to fade and doesn't get it. Here's Chris Sandy, the junior out of Brooklyn, New York, with the West Ark Community College. He actually led the whack and assist for us of the season. Inside, Eli, nice spin move, draws the foul. And it should be on Jackson. Nice little feed. Fresno nice and patient. Going to post their big guy up. You see Sandy comes over here to the wing. They're going to go right to him. Mandy, nice little baseline bounce pass. Foul there on Brown. That's on Darian Brown. Yeah. And here's our look at two-time WAC player of the year. Melvin Eli, the senior out of Harvey, Illinois. Well, you talk to Jerry Tarkini, and this young man has done everything the coaching staff has asked him. He's a solid free throw shooter at 74%, but I think he really garnered a lot of attention at the World Games in China this past summer. Tark's team over there. I mean, this guy stepped it up by two or three notches. Well, just, he's, he's so versatile. There's so many things he can do. The guy's a terrific shot blocker, so he's a great defender. When they had Jeffries make a play man-to-man, -man, they really could get out and pressure you on perimeter, force you to go to the basket, and this guy's blocking shots like crazy, so he can do so many different things, and then offensively, forget about it. The guy's got tremendous offensive skills. Cole got Sandy up in the air, and Sandy went for the fake and drew the foul. Well, maybe Gerard Henderson will start shooting better. He's taken off the headband. <laughs> That's what it was. You know, you look for those little things. Well, they, what they don't understand is it goes around your head, not <laughs> over your eyes. You got, he was wearing it correctly. Didn't read the instructions, apparently. <laughs> That's right. right. Over his eyes, and that makes it tougher to shoot. <laughs> Brown swings it over to Cole. That's a traveling call. 
And I believe he got away with it. Another turnover for Louisiana Tech. They're already up to five. Well, that's what that's what Fresno can do. They get out there, and, and that, that's Melvin Eli on a closeout at about 20 feet. And that's got to be a pretty lonely feeling for Felton as he goes to pull the trigger. You know, Tark is always based. All his teams. A lot of people say run and rebels this, run and rebels that. The bottom line is his defense has always set up his offense. Well, I don't think it's any question. That's why Fresno is constantly at the top in that upper echelon of the league in the WAC. Is across the board, the WAC has got to improve the, their level of defense. And Fresno plays it hard. Tulsa plays it hard. Hawaii, a great right. defensive team. There's no surprise those teams are at the top. We saw Nevada playing great defense today, too. Anderson took his eyes off the ball, and the, the Bambi took his, picked his pocket. Sandy looks for the three, takes the three, misses the three. Offensive rebound, Sandy. And we're going to come right over here and go to Mr. Melvin. Well, he's trying to get position on that left block. Reverse it a little bit. Still looking. El Sayed. Nope. Traveling call. Go the other way. And I'm watching Chris Sandy. His body language is he's already getting a little frustrated. And I think the young man has to realize he sat out six games. You can't expect to come back to where you were six games ago, even from a chemistry standpoint, correct? Right. Well, and they're really taking his his dribble away from him. They're sagging off and, and really covering that paint. And really all Fresno was left with is go to the wing, dump it in. And a uh, guy like Sandy, he wants to get out there and use his dribble to create and, and dish to his teammates. And, you know, you got to kind of find your spot. You can't force that kind of action or you end up with turnover. And Michael Wilder's checked in for Louisiana Tech, number 14, the junior college transfer out of Decatur, Illinois. And Phil Rasmus, the freshman from Sacramento, comes in for Fresno State. Albert Eli is going to be whistled for the foul. That'll be his first personal. Well, I tell you what, the guy's out there. He's out there pressuring the basketball out on the wing. He chases it down to the baseline. Gets a piece of the arm, I guess, on the pass. But Tart showing no... No fear of getting his big guy out there and, and, and using him defensively. Tony O'Meeking back in the lineup. Tiger O'Meeking. He's a big fella now, I tell you. He's got some guns. <laughs> Felton gives it up to Henderson. Saw that guy in a USA Hoops Festival when he was in high school, and he's that exact size in high school. Oh, that's scary. He gets the easy deuce. Meeking now with two in the ball game, averages just over ten and a half a contest. And Fresno State's lead is cut down to three. Look by as many as five. I had that one at the time. You had it all. Yeah, I was there. You know, how I went for it. <laughs> We've got a timeout. 11:32 to play in the first half. Fresno State by three. This is the 2002 Williams Black Basketball Tournament Network. get a great six dollar restaurant burger without the restaurant the six dollar burger only 395 at carl's jr we're proud one of the world's finest medical schools ucsf brings its doctors and training to us for residency we're even prouder that most of them decide to stay right here community medical centers there's no better place to be if you or a loved one ever faces cancer, the last thing you need is a long ride to Stanford for advanced treatment. Fortunately, university-level cancer care is right here. Community medical centers, there's no better place to be. Roadside technicians are dedicated, very, very dedicated. The E-Class comes with roadside assistance for the life of the car, service unlike any other. Well, Louisiana Tech still having their offensive low, shooting only 24% of the ball game, but they only trail by three, which is probably the good news. Well, they've been very patient on the offensive end, and here you see Fresno extending on the baseline. They go down inside the making who gets the easy one, but really, you know, the, the defense, Tark with such, uh, 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 you know, confidence in Eli, getting out on the floor, you see him hustling, ends up picking up a foul on this deal, but this guy's getting out, he's working on the defensive end, and then he's their main option on the offensive end, so they, they're milking this guy for all he'll give them. Chris Sandy, 
Brings it up to Eli. Eli, great ball fake to the hole. Easy two for Melvin Eli. Nice job. Comes out, uses the ball fake to get Johnson up, off balance. Oh, the One scouts, I'm telling you, Brad, the scouts sitting on the side like to see the big man take it to the hole like that. Yeah, well, you know, you're an NBA guy. I mean, you can see this guy that those skills definitely will play on the next level with that size. Wilder's pass a little too strong, knocks out of bounds. But we do have a whistle and a foul on the play. So he gets sliding over and oh. drawn the charge. Well, we have Thutton, that is his first personal foul. Fifth team foul. Nice job there, freezing, getting Johnson up off the ground. Felton not over in time. Finishing at the rack. Check out the game that fouled a Wilder. That's his first goal. Now Lotek showing zone. Really got really to be concerned with that size of Fresno State. Trying to push him out to the perimeter. And he launches the three. Eli can't get the rebound. It's going to be controlled by Louisiana Tech. Felton tries to give it up to Wilder. Took his eyes off it just for a second. The junior transfer from Chipola Junior College. Couldn't get the handle on it. Well, the thing for La Tech right now, the thing that's disappointing is all their problems are self-inflicted. That's right. You know, they, they, they're doing what they have to do defensively. They're doing what they have to do on the glass if they're not taking care of the basketball and giving possessions back. Eli sees a double. It's a weak one. We got a whistle and a foul on the right side. Louisiana Tech can't believe it. And that is on Meeking, and that is his third personal foul. Uh, oh Mr. Meeking's going to get to watch the rest of this half from the bench. You got it. You're taking a wide body out. It's 6'8. The junior from Farmerville, Louisiana, is he's done for at least the next 10 minutes and 28 seconds. Melvin Eli showing a little range with a stiff point of the ball game. And now you can see Fresno really should, making an effort now to, to involve Melvin Eli on the offensive end. And again, here you go. You see him out on the wing. Seven-point lead for Fresno State. Coming in as the underdog in this game. Louisiana Tech, the number three seed. Gerard Henderson, nowhere to go. Wilder for three. Rebound, Melvin Eli. In Fresno State, Brad, you've seen these guys a lot. They're the kind of team. They start to get a swagger when they get a little lead. Exactly. And, and, and let them start getting to the glass on you on the defensive end, and they'll start the running game on you. They can score them in bunches. You don't let them get going. Eli showing a great deal of play. Shot clock at 17. Plenty of time. Mitchell with 13 to shoot. This is off. El Cyan inside. Count the basket. Nice hard take there into the paint. Mitchell keeps his composure. Finds Syed on the opposite side. A nice finish for the big fella. Fresno now really asserting himself in that paint, starting to take control of the offensive end. Nine-point Fresno State lead with 9.29, and this really isn't that great of a surprise. Wayne Powell will check in for Louisiana Tech. A lot of people felt that, and we were talking before the game with some of the Fresno State people, this is a wounded animal, this Fresno State Bulldog team. They're going to come in and just play calls to the wall in this game. Well, they, they make no mistake. They, you know, they were the best team in the league yeah. prior to Jeffrey's injury. And, uh, you know, they're still a very good basketball team. And, you know, I kind of feel like they've kind of come into this tournament. They've lost that target that was on their back in the last few years. They're kind of a sleeping giant. And, and uh, well, you don't want to wake the giant. No. You know, in the fact, they played the Louisiana Tech, and that loss to Louisiana Tech started a four-game skid after Jeffries hurt the knee. Yeah, they went on the road, came to Tulsa, lost to Tulsa, uh, went to Rice, really just had a terrible performance at Rice and dropped one at Rice. This is a team that many publications, even before all the problems, said that uh, it would be a Sweet 16 team. And even without Jeffries now, this is a team that beat Oklahoma State uh, right. just three, four weeks ago. Another turnover for Louisiana Tech. I mean, you think about it. They beat Southern Cal, probably favored to win the Pac-10. They beat Michigan State. They beat Oklahoma State. They lose to Wake Forest by one. This is a strong Fresno State team. There's no question. And they're used to being in games like this. Exactly. Inside, it's Syed just flying in from the right side. Well, Louisiana Tech now, they, they, they have a big possession here on the offensive end. They need their all-whack performer, Gerard Henderson, step up. Make something happen for them. They just are having a tough time guarding in that post. Henderson drains the three. You called it. And there he goes. He's calling to his teammates. I'll get you back in it. Let's go. Get on my back. We'll ride it in. 
Eli showing a little dribbling. Sayed is double, hits and pokes it out of bounds. Fresno State has it with 23 on the shot clock. And you see two, three defenders coming now. Anytime Fresno tries to throw it into that box. Now Eli is exchanging some words with Henderson. And they're just going to see where they're going to eat after the game. Yeah, this friendly whack play. I like when the officials bring both guys together and say, okay, both of you be quiet. Okay, let us do our job, all right? This is all they don't go Tyson Lewis on us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be sanctioned here anyway. <laughs> Not a chance. Yeah, yeah, basketball huh? guys. We're, we're all soft and hard right. anyway. We talk a tough game. Yeah, it's like baseball guys. <laughs> Push and shove each other. Some of the worst fights you ever see. <laughs> Mitchell. Nice little ball fake. Got a little Derek Fisher in him out there in the Lakers. Prancing around. 10 to shoot. Alley. Oops. Yeah. Melvin Eli on the set. Draws the foul. Well, Latte just got their hands full with that post play of Fresno State. You see here, just nice to spin off there, off the defender. Catch and finish. Isn't able to elevate and get the dunk, but does draw the foul and get two free throws. And Powell commits the foul. His first of the ball game. Melvin Eli will be at the line. You know, this is a great story <laughs> off the basketball for this young man. Graduated on time, and because of his situation when he first came to school, he got an extra year of eligibility. But just the fact that this man buckled down academically, athletically, he was tremendous. Academically, he's beyond that for what he did. Our hat is off to him. Right, you know, kids got to learn. You know, and, and NCAA does such a, a great job of this now, even even better than they used to. But it's important. These guys are coming to go to school, and it's important that they take care of business. So, you know, not that you have something to fall back on necessarily, but to say that all your options are open. It's a great opportunity, and it's a shame if a young man comes in and doesn't doesn't take full advantage of his opportunity. And they're looking to try to get it into Powell. They finally do, but it slips right into the hands of Eli. Here comes Mitchell. Ten for Fresno State lead. They've led by 11. Noel Felix for three. Rebound controlled by Powell, the freshman out of Alexandria, Louisiana, the pride of Peabody High School. Well, and that was one that if he got that to go, you might have had Louisiana Tech on the on the oh, ropes yeah. a little bit here early. But again, that size along that back line, that size of Fresno State makes it hard to see. Get that ball into the lane. Get easy ones. You gotta knock down the perimeter Jays against this matchup zone. Anderson looking for Powell. Powell will take the baseline. Four black jerseys around the basketball, only one white one. Seven minutes and five seconds to play in the first half. It's been a dandy so far. Eli is shoved by Powell, and Powell will pick up his second personal foul. And you see Fresno really not even that concerned with getting out and, and running in transition. They know they've got such an advantage in the post. As you see, nice post up here. Powell's getting pushed off the box, but again, that nice spin move to the baseline. You can't help him to the baseline. That's a foul. But uh, Fresno just content to come down, go to the wing, throw it inside. They just they know they've got a serious advantage there. Uh, Going to get Louisiana Tech in some foul trouble here last seven minutes. Well, Demanby and uh, Hiram Fuller check back into the lineup for Fresno State. Marco Cole comes back in for Louisiana Tech. Melvin Eli back at the line, three of four from the stretch, seven points in the ball game, four rebounds to go along with it. Also throwing a couple of assists, by the way. And Chris Sandy will also come in, and they're going to uh, give Matt Mitchell a little rest. How good is that, though? You take out Matt Mitchell, who's done a nice job for a freshman. You're bringing a guy with the experience of Chris Sandy, and he's the backup. Well, I'll tell you, and, and, and Mitchell really had a lot thrown on him when Sandy got that suspension, and, and he's handled it pretty well. Uh, just affected their depth, and uh, Fresno throwing everything at him now. Biggest lead of the game for Fresno State. They lead by a dozen. This is the 2002 Williams Wack Basketball Tournament Network. They say 
The new car has powers magical. They say once you sit inside, you turn into a different person. In this car, I wish to ride. The all-new Lexus ES300. A new world of luxury. At Fresno Lexus. If you've been shocked, even dropped by your insurance company, now is the time to find a new home at our new home. Come see us at our new office, where our goal is to get you insured at a fair price. Cost less, reliable insurance. Alley wide with our new, more convenient Shaw location in Fresno. Don't miss Blackie Gigian's 43rd annual Fresno Autorama, a multi million dollar collection of sweepstakes winning custom cars from across the United States. See the last two Riddler Award winners from Detroit's Autorama and this 49 Studebaker golf cart with a blown Chrysler Hemi. Starts next Friday at the Convention Center Exhibit Hall. Hello, with Brian Riley. I'm Ron Thulin, welcoming you back to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Two quarterfinals already in the book. Nevada, Hawaii winners. They'll meet in one semifinal. Fresno State now with their biggest lead of the game and a dozen over Louisiana Tech. They will take on the winner of the Tulsa Boise State game later, and you can see the shooting woes of Louisiana Tech. Our Tech, they, that is just horrible for them. Well, they're going to see this zone the whole way. They've got to start shooting the J, or they will be put away here early before half. And, uh, you know, you just got to step up on perimeter and, and, and knock down a jump shot. You know, coaches always talk the first five and last five of any quarter and or half. That is so important here for Louisiana Tech because from a confidence standpoint, Fresno State could just put a couple of nails in the coffin, and there's the first by Jackson. And Keith Richard knows that. That's as much transition as we've seen tonight. And Tim Jackson just came down, and he knows what he's got. He knows he's got a team that's on the edge, and he's going to come down, and he's going to try and throw the dagger. You might as well. I mean, uh, that rule number one in postseason basketball, when you got somebody down, kick them. they got to go. they got to go. It's time to put them out of the house. Well, Damon Jackson, the sophomore out of Paris, California, from College of the Sequoias. This is pretty transition basketball. And again, nice job, Sandy, seeing the floor, giving it up. You got to close out there on defense. You can't just let that guy come and pull the trigger. You got to close out on, the, on those guys on perimeter while they're just kind of sitting back and watching. And Damon Jackson made him pay. Well, Damon, a uh, little unfair recruiting advantage for Jerry Tarkanian because Damon played for Tark's son George in junior college. I think he called up and said, Dad, I got a keeper. That is certainly an inside track. Wilder slashes inside. Fuller may have gotten a piece of him. He had a choice of two players, and it is Fuller. Well, that's that's kind of what you need there. You need to get somehow. You got to get to the rim. A great job getting to the wing, getting by the initial defender, and then getting to the rim. Try to get to the free throw line. Maybe get them to try to squeeze that zone a little bit and get a few open jumpers on perimeter on the kickout. Michael Wilder can't get the free throw to go. He's 75% on the year for Keith Richard's team. Wilder is one of the players that Richard says we were lucky to get. They think an awful lot of this young man. One more year of eligibility. But the lead is at 14. A big dose with a low post. Oh, got away with a hold there. <laughs> yeah. Fresno State can't get sloppy now. Because you don't win 20 games by being sloppy, so Louisiana Tech can get right back in this. Yeah, right now, you know, Louisiana Tech's got foul trouble. got Nicky on the bench. You, you just cannot afford to play him again in this half, so uh, they're just going to have to make do. But uh, you shouldn't have to score more than 12 uh, points. Chris Sandy, a 28% shooter from beyond the arc with his first points in seven games. Gets the three, and the lead gets pushed to 17, the biggest of the ball game. I really like the job Fresno's doing defensively. They're closing out on perimeter, not letting those perimeter players get good looks, making everybody go off the dribble. Cole inside, caught his own ball, and it'll belong to Fresno State after they call it a jump. You know what I like, too? I was watching for Sandy on that. He goes out, contests the outside shot quickly, goes down to the corner. He's always moving, always. Anybody with a white jersey, somebody is on them. Yeah, and they're really forcing them to put the ball on the floor and try to create. And, and when you do that, it, especially w with a zone, uh, it, does, it, it, it does them a disservice. They can't get into the lane. They've got to try to find kickouts. And Fresno, those big guys, they get a hand on the ball. Uh, they're knocking it away. Only four points in the last 6.15 for Louisiana Tech. And Fuller gets shoved from behind. And Louisiana Tech starting to show just a tad of frustration. Well, just, a, just an incredible mismatch there. you got the uh, 6'6", 172 going against uh, 6'11", 260. And uh, Cole, you know, kind of disappears behind Fuller. Yeah. 
of the two, or I should say the top four scores all in double figures for Louisiana Tech. They've only scored nine points. Of course, they've only scored 12 as a team. Fuller can't get the first one to go. Well, Louisiana Tech will have it. Oh, you don't want to make that mistake. King's playing well defensively, missed the free throw, yep. and then foul on the rebound. <laughs> Tark seems a little relaxed at this point. He's been a few tough big ball games before, I think. Yeah, I think he has. I hit the bag of peanuts over there next time. <laughs> yeah, the line. Then, then he's stretching it there. He starts getting order in the hot dogs. <laughs> Louisiana Tech looking for some combination of Wilder shot no. And that's the first really good look they've had in a while. Johnson on the inside. No, it's going to be an offensive foul. And again, trying to lean in. You're trying. They're trying to lean in and draw the contact. If you got to, you got to go straight up here. Melvin Eli, had a good job sliding over, and Johnson tries to lean in, and it is offensive foul. You got to go straight up with that. Eli's coming over just to take the charge. He's not going to block shots. But that's the other thing. If you pull up and go straight up, he's liable to throw it up here into row four. Well, Johnson picked up the foul. That is uh, his first personal. Sandy up front, 4.45 to play in the first half. It has been all Fresno State in the first 16 minutes. A fellow took his eye off it. Here comes Henderson. No, he pass for the big guy to handle. Outside, the three off the back of the iron. Sandy has a three on two if he hurries, and he'll hold it up. The pride of Brooklyn, New York. Not a good look there on Brenner. Pressler, he's not able to get one to go down. Eli to follow and he buries the baseline jumper. Eli with 11 in the ball game. Five rebounds and a couple of assists. See Fresno out. They love that aggressiveness on the ball. Getting out, they'll contest the passes. They'll get in the passing lanes. But really forcing Louisiana Tech to work. All right, Cole, shot clock at 12. Wilder has it stripped by Demanby, and we've got a foul. But again, Wilder being very aggressive, getting into the lane. Forced them to make a play. Might have gotten a break there. Looked like a pretty good block there by Demanby. But that's what aggressiveness does. You force it, force, force the action. Now is on Demandy. His first personal foul. Wilder at the line. One for two tonight. Averaging just under eight points a ball game as Edwards will take a seat. Here's kind of a surprise. They're bringing Antonio Meeking in with three fouls with 3.43 to play in the half. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. No offense, Coach Richard. Except that you're down by so many. It's kind of get back in it here time and, or, 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 or it may be too late yeah. in the second half. See, you know, you don't get green stamps for saving fouls. <laughs> That's right. Fresno State leads it by 17. This is the 2002 Williams Black Basketball Tournament Network. Now, held over by popular demand, the Chrysler Great American Getaway. Your chance to get away with great offers on our award-winning lineup, like our seven-year, 100,000-mile engine and transmission powertrain pledge. Cash allowances up to $2,500 or 0% financing on select minivans. GM, Ford, and Toyota don't give you all that. So hurry for great products, great protection, and great value. That's the Chrysler Advantage. Why would you wear Good Feet Arch Supports? Why wouldn't you? If you suffer from foot pain, leg pain, or back pain, you should know that pain relief can begin with your feet. The Good Feet Store may have your solution to these problems. We can help you get better balance, comfort, and support. Act now to give your feet the support they need. Call 1-866-224-3338 or find us at goodfeet.com. Good Feet Arch Supports will change your life. Imagine a business relationship with someone who shares your vision, your drive to success. A business relationship with someone who accepts your challenges and helps take you to new heights. An advocate and source of knowledge. The kind of business relationship you have with Comerica Bank. Offering experience and expertise that no other business bank can. With fast, flexible solutions and a staunch belief that you're the priority. Because at Comerica Bank, we listen. We understand. We make it work. 
Louisiana Tech scored the first four points of the game, and since then it's been 31-10 to 10 in favor of Fresno State. One of the reasons the play of Melvin Eli. Well, once, once Fresno established that low post action, and, and it's just been a steady diet of Melvin Eli. Nice little turnaround there. Johnson doing a good job defensively, being physical, uh, pushing him off the box, forcing him out there at 8-10 feet. But, hey, you know what, folks? Uh, he's got that jump, jumper, too. You know, he's only taking five shots. It's not like he's, you know, shooting lights out of the ball tonight. He's very efficient, I shall say. Sandy to the hole. The penetration scoop won't go. Fuller fights for it, kept it alive for a second. And a roll of the dice here by Coach Keith Richard getting leaking in. He's got three just to try to keep his team from, from getting blown out. And they're trying to call the timeout. They're going to call the jump ball instead. Possession arrows, Louisiana Tech. Well, they are calling uh, the timeout. One official signal, the jump ball. The other signal, timeout. So it is a 30. Now, if you're Keith Richard, 313, you're, you're, the, you're the coach here, Brian. Tell us what he's telling his troops right now because there's no such thing, obviously, as a 17-point play. Well, they got so, they've got to get something on this inbounds play, so he's probably drawing up something they can get a quick look off the inbounds, and then they're going to have to come up and extend the floor and try to pressure a little bit to try to up-tempo this before the, uh, before the break. Important, that timeout right there, they can cut Louisiana Tech down to one timeout, so if they do climb back into this in the second half, uh, you know, they are, they are hurting that department as well, so uh, definitely gonna, I, I think they'll come out and probably show a little bit of pressure, but uh, try to get something off this inbounds. Henderson out front, dancing around. Oh. But just a good job. Look at those closeouts, Fresno. Good yeah. job closing out on the ball. And demand becomes over helps out. Eight to shoot. Inside the turnaround and nothing but the bottom of the net for Meeky. And no pressure from Louisiana Tech. They're going to fall back, but they are matching up now. Louisiana Tech's first field goal in almost six minutes. The three won't go. Fresno State doesn't want to shoot themselves out of this. Well, now Louisiana Tech has chance to kind of get themselves back in. But Henderson just drops it out of bounds. Well, I'll tell you, when it's going bad, it's going bad. Maybe Jackson will sit down. El Sayed comes back into the lineup. Pete Richard keeping his same five in there. I tell you what, we don't we don't do much basketball, but the game we like is that, that game of golf. That's just like missing that little two footer oh, tap yeah. in for par right there. Henderson dropping that out of bounds. Sometimes it's just lack of concentration. Rasmussen's pass is kicked. First 35 on the shot clock. 15 point advantage. Fresno State led by as many as 19 in this ball game. Louisiana Tech staying in that man-to-man -man defense. Eli tries to hit the second one like that, doesn't get it. Zach Johnson may have gotten a big hand in it. Well, again, if, that, if, if you're going to give Melvin Eli something, that little eight-foot fadeaway jumper, that's you know that's about all you can really ask for defensively. Wilder to Cole. Cole sees the double quickly inside as Zach Johnson, he gets his first two. And that seems to be the play. You get it to that wing, dribble to the baseline, force the double, and then get your big guy to seal on the inside. You might be able to dump it down, or if that big guy doesn't close out fast enough, that's where the jet is going to come from. Six straight points out for Louisiana Tech, and Jerry Tarkanian says enough already. Well, somebody's, one of the big guys got to explain why they didn't rotate over and take away Zach Johnson right there. But uh, you can see a nice job, Mark, Marco Cole, getting to the baseline. No big guy slides over and takes it away. And it looks like El Sayed's going to have some explaining to do over there in that timeout. <laughs> slide over, cover that backside. Your post guy goes out to, to guard the ball. He doesn't do it. Zach Johnson steps in there, and you give up an easy one. And now Vlatek, a little bit of a mini run. They can get a stop here. You know? That's right. I mean, you, you know, the old adage, and you probably use it to your guys, you coach, get him inside a double digits, and then we're in the ballgame. You only do it one possession at a time. That's right. Uh, you know, Fresno's not doing anything to you that, that is surprising. They're coming down and throwing to their best guy. That's basically what they're doing. Uh, so you know what you have to stop, uh, but you got to take better care of the basketball at your end and, and you know, figure someone's going to start knocking down some shots. You know, it's the best defensive field goal percentage for Louisiana Tech they've had since the 69-70 season. And we haven't seen a whole lot of that here in the first half. It's going to stay shooting 50% for the ballgame so far. Sandy lost it, got a bad. That's a birthday present. 
Eli from deep in the corner. He's missed his last two shots. Wilder has Johnson on the right side. Sandy commits the infraction. Well, I bet you Coach Richard would love to see that go and one. You got, you got one right there at the rim. You want to drop him off and get your free throw. But a good job. Get, get Eli to take another 10-footer. Get in there on the glass. Henderson pushes it ahead. Wilder going strong to the hole. Just got to finish that, baby. Yeah. If you want to be all whack, if you want that all whack next year, babe, you got to finish that. You got to throw that bad boy down. Yes, sir. But that's just been the struggles. That's been the struggles of this team in the first half. And, you know, here they are. They're, you know, they get this sucker down to possibly 11. Well, he has hit his last four free throws. He's four or five. All of his points coming from the line. Good sweet stroke. I tell you, you've gotten your team kind of back where you want. I think a good move right now, get Meeking out of the game. Don't let him pick up his yeah. fourth in the last minute 20. They're not going to put you away. You've, you've mission accomplished with Antonio Meeking. Get him back out of the game so you have him for the second half. Well, keep the shards keeping him in there. And you, and you know that Meeking said, Coach, I'm all right. I'm all right. You've probably heard that a hundred times. Another turnover. Right through the hands of Noel Felix. The junior out of Los Angeles. And that was 64 seconds left. Louisiana Tech can pull within nine or closer. But they throw it away again. Well, Henderson has just struggled in this first half. Just having a tough time, can't score, having a tough time catching. Uh, and that one, he just threw it right to the man. Twelve turnovers in the ball game. Zach Johnson was leaning on Melvin Eli on that. Johnson will pick up the foul. That'll be his second. Well, how timely was that? Sir? I mean, you have you, you cut it down to 11. You have a chance to get it down to as much as eight and throw it away. Right, and it's basically an unforced uh, uh, turnover. Again, just you know, just threw it right to the defense. Uh, you just got to have better focus than that. And, and you know, the thing, the positive thing for, for Louisiana Tech, you can talk, they're going to talk about it at halftime, is, hey, guys, you know, all these problems we're having, most of them are self-inflicted. Right. I mean, if we can do these things, turn these things around, this 11-point lead's going to disappear pretty quickly. Rasmussen out. El Sayed back in. You know, you're 26%. You turn the ball over by 12, but you're still within striking distance. You should pop champagne in the locker room at halftime. Yeah, if all you can muster is 20 yeah. and a half in, in a Division One basketball game, uh, you can't really expect to be ahead. Just about an 11-second difference between the shot and the game clock. Wilder pops out front. The man who picks him up quickly. The penetration into the lane, and that's one way to chip the lead down. I think it's going to go on Melvin Eli. When you see why they're so excited about Wilder, he just a good job, good strong ball handler. Gets it down into the meat of the defense, forces them to come up and make a play. Wilder's been hot from the line. He has hit his uh, last five. Still no points from the field, all from the strike. Eli had it, lost it in the putback by Zach Johnson. Nice job coming over, just wrestles it away from Melvin Eli. And it's an 11-point lead again. Shot clock is turned off. Fresno State should have the last attempt. Well, you know, for, for as much as Louisiana Tech has struggled, uh, this is this is probably a pretty sizable run for the way that first half has gone. The man he has his shot rejected by Wilder. Final shot. Henderson inside. Basket no good. They're going to count it. They sure are. Yes, they are. Can't take that ball off the glass. Once that ball gets on the glass, you can't touch it. Great hustle back and transition defense for Fresno but just not able to get it before it gets to the glass. See here, nice play to Ron Henderson, pushing it down the floor, and Zach Johnson running alongside. Now maybe we don't have it for you, have, but he dumps it off to Zach Johnson. Fresno in transition, not able to get to it before it gets to the glass. That'll do it. The 19-point lead that Fresno State had. Tip the hat to Louisiana Tech. Park saw the 19-point lead dwindle in the last four minutes. It is down to a nine as Louisiana Tech closed down on a 12 to two run. We've got a game, semifinal. Number two, the uh, competitors try to be decided tonight. The winner of this, taking on the winner of the Tulsa Boise State game. That'll be coming up. 20 minutes in the books. Sark's team leads by nine, 33-24. We'll be back with our halftime activities from Tulsa right after this.
Our roadside technicians are dedicated, very, very dedicated. The E-Class comes with roadside assistance for the life of the car, service unlike any other. As your local dairy financial specialist, Farm Credit West understands the industry and is here to listen to your needs. It's not just a matter of extending loans. Farm Credit West makes investments in your business. By building relationships today with young beginning and small farmers, Farm Credit West is securing long-term partnerships with the dairy industry of tomorrow. Ask your Farm Credit West loan officer about custom dairy loan programs designed with your needs in mind. Call today. Farm Credit West is your local dairy financial specialist and equal housing lender. The seven best kisses. <laughs> you can relate. Weekday afternoons at 5 on WB59. If you've been shocked, even dropped by your insurance company, now is the time to find a new home at our new home. Come see us at our new office, where our goal is to get you insured at a fair price. Cost less reliable insurance. Alley wide with our new, more convenient Shaw location in Fresno. We're going to treat you right. At Martin Chevrolet, our friendly trained service staff will treat you right. Martin Chevrolet. We're going to treat you right. And our courteous sales staff will treat you right. Come on down. We'll treat you right. So come to Martin Chevrolet and be treated right. Martin Chevrolet. We're going to treat you right. We're at halftime at the Reynolds Center. It's also Oklahoma. And Fresno State had a 19-point lead, but thanks to a 12-2 run to close out the half, Louisiana Tech now only trails by 9, 33-24. In one of our earlier games today, Nevada took care of SMU, 72-66. Trent Johnson is the head coach of Nevada. He's standing by now with Brian Riley. Brian? All right, thanks, Ron. That's right. I got Coach Johnson with me. Guys played a terrific game here. Hard-fought one with SMU. You guys look like you stood around a little bit on perimeter early in that game, but looks like we made a real concerted effort in the second half to get it inside, and the guys really responded. Well, Brian, they do a really good job defensively, SMU, and change the defenses and really get you out of rhythm offensively. And we knew going in that we were going to have to make some adjustments. And like you said, we made a pretty good adjustment in the second half. The shots went down for us, and we were successful. Well, also, another big night for Corey Jackson on the glass. I tell you what, I, you know, guy goes out there and gets 18 boards, uh, kind of a Rodman-like performance. Uh, have to be proud of him. Well, he's been like that all year long. He's been really consistent. I just sort of pencil in 11, 12 rebounds a game and about four or five loose balls. And, you know, as a senior, you couldn't be more happy for him. He's really playing well for us down the stretch. All right, well, now you got Hawaii. Had them last week. We're able to win. Uh Antonio Meeking for Louisiana Tech, big number 34. He already has three personal fouls. Played that last 134, actually the last three minutes uh, of that first half with those three fouls. Huge roll of the dice there, and it pays off. Got you back into the game, and now you got a chance to, to uh, you know, take possession of it and uh, cut it under double digits even further. Second half underway. The winner goes to the semifinals tomorrow night at 8:30. Now here's that uh, amoeba zone, as we called it in the first half, which Tuck plays so well. Wilder over Eli, the rainbow, the offensive rebound, the putback. Well, that's been the story. They're yeah. able to get to the glass. They got to the baseline where the open area is against that zone, got to the glass, and just could not convert it. Meeking and Johnson, two point blank looks. LCN with a quick turnaround. He has six in the ball game, and the lead is pushed back to double digits. Well, and that's and when Meekin gets posted up. He just he really can't afford to be too aggressive on yeah. the defensive end uh, and, and pick up that four. Yeah, you just have to pound the ball down there. Quick pass inside. Zach Johnson, no. Rebound controlled by the smallest man on the floor, Matt Mitchell. Eli Watson. Didn't force it. The man be looking for the high archer. That's the three. Nothing but that. Nice job. Melvin Hulak comes down, gets it on the baseline, doesn't force anything, reverses the fastball. Mitchell, a nice little drive to pull the defense in and the kick out for the three. And the lead is back to 14. Now they're being matched up with Mitchell. The man be picked up Anderson. 
Ball by Jackson. They'll say it had it, kicked it. Oh, it's on a post moving down there against Syed. Good job getting his hands in, knocking the ball away. Mitchell's just doing a nice job of pounding Wilder. Wilder, nice dribble penetration. The prayer will be answered. Well, there's been one consistent bright spot for Louisiana Tech offensively. It's been Wilder. He's been able to get, put the ball on the floor and get it into the rim. Uh, it's been nice finish there among the trees. Jackson put the ball on his hip. That is a traveling call or an offensive foul. They're going to call the offensive foul. He had a choice on that one. That'll be Jackson's second personal foul. First team foul here in the second half. Yeah, nice job while they're staying in front. Jackson using that body a little too much to create space. Check that Jackson has three personal fouls. He's got to play a little careful. Fresno gets Sandy right into the game here. It was an over demand B, and he buries the jumper. That is Henderson's first point since probably the 10 minute mark of that first half. And well, that's it's perfect against the zone. One, two dribble drives, get in the holes of the zone, pull up and shoot the jumper. You got to be confident, but you got to take that jump shot. Melvin Eli sees the triple team. Jackson launches the three. Eli had it, lost it, rolled off his back, and it belonged to Louisiana Tech, trailing by just 10. And Eli talking to Syed, telling him to cut to the basket. He ball went into the post, and nobody moved. Didn't have anybody to pass to out of the double team. Now Jackson out. Interesting scenario now. Sandy and Mitchell both in a couple of point guards. Sandy probably will play the two, I have to think, huh? Well, you know, he's not one of your better players. It doesn't matter where he is. Nice pass down into the low post. He can deposit it. Thank you very much. Boy, he was wide open, Brian. Mickey now with six points in the ball game. Well, that's what happens against this matchup zone. It forces the, the big guys to come out and guard, and if that middleman does not slide over and take the basket, you'll be wide open at the basket. Nice pass down to Meeking for the dunk. Well, Johnson is going to commit his third personal foul. So Meeking with three, Johnson in three. Watch his pass. And you see, you know, four guys over there on the ball side. No one slides over, and that's Melvin Eli. He doesn't slide over to take the basket. And a nice pass by the Meeking right at right the rim. I'll say it again. Lost defensively. The bank, it is open for Chris Sandy. Nice little job. Uses the pump fake to freeze the defense. Gets into that eight, ten foot range. Nice little kiss off the glass. Ten point advantage. They're able to cut it to eight. Dry Henderson cuts the lead down to seven. Well, I tell you what, Fresno does not want this guy to get his confidence going, but a nice job while they're drawing kick out there. Rod Henderson knocking down the big three ball. The man be looking down low. Every time Eli touches it, he gets the double. Wilder with his second block. That bug is still loose. Wilder gives it up. Henderson for three. El Sayed crashes into a couple of bodies. Eli comes up with it, tries to get some help. They're double teaming him 90 feet from there. <laughs> you don't think he's a threat, folks? <laughs> I didn't think I was watching that. There's those state fans chanting offense. Louisiana Tech fans chanting defense. Well, there's a big possession here on the offensive end for Fresno. Oh, is that against Johnson or Mickey? Or are they going to call it on Cole? Zach Johnson picks it up. Johnson picks it up. That is his fourth personal foul. Keith Richard has his big men getting in foul trouble. The only trail is about seven. These people may have little in common, except that they rode through dozens of states for thousands of miles, raising $24 million in one event for the United Way, the most in its history. Another thing they have in common is the company they work for. But the most important thing they have in common is they prove that by working together, ordinary people can do extraordinary things. It's where academics count. It's where athletes count. It's where alumni count. 
Bank account. Count it all up, and you'll have a crystal clear picture of what we believe, who we are, and what we do. Our purpose, our focus, our passion. Celebrating 40 years of the Western Athletic Conference, where actions count. Welcome back, and uh, I tell you, it's picking up the pace and it's getting physical. Well, I, I tell you, Wilder having a nice game. Gets out there, gets the block. Henderson getting on the floor. You think these guys don't want it? Maybe they're getting after it. And then you see here, a nice little pump fake. Gets into the about 8, 10 foot, knocks it down. We said Gerard Henderson had to step up in this half. And if their team is going to climb back in it, he's done that, and now they're to seven. Well, they took Zach Johnson out of the lineup. He has played with four personal fouls. Of course, Meeking also playing with three. They brought Darian Brown in, the junior transfer out of West Memphis, Arkansas, where Jersey 24. Richard wanting the backboard. You know, momentum can't force you into a backboard on an inbound play. So all of you folks that were yelling. Offensive foul is going to be called on El Sayed. That'll be his first personal foul. Well, some things got to go Louisiana Tech's way now. Fresno having a, a little trouble on the offense again. Well, they pulled with him seven at the 1640 mark. He's gone by a minute since then. It is still a seven point advantage for Fresno State. Inside, shot goes down by Darian Brown. Well, now Fresno, the containment, not as good as it was early. While they're, while they're out time able to get into the into the lane and the dish to the baseline, and Brown, the easy one on the, on, on the glass. We have a whistle and a foul. But things are never too bad when you got a guy like you to come down and throw the ball to. Fouls on Brown. That is his second. But a good job there. Penetration pulls Asayed up the lane, drops it to the baseline. Nice finish there, Brown. Well, Melvin Eli will go to the line. Seven of eight from the line. 13 points, six rebounds for Eli, and a couple of assists. Having a complete game. Once again, there's probably, I would have to say, conservatively, uh, probably eight to ten NBA scouts here. He's certainly got a future in the league. This guy is going to do many things. He can run the floor. He will play the next one. Somewhere. We have another. But the luxury of having a big man that can hit free throws. He's got a little Rasheed Wallace look about him, too. <laughs> He's got a nice that Rasheed, doesn't he? With the goatee working and the headband. Doesn't have that temper. No, thank goodness. <laughs> Outside, Wilder for three. Brown thought he had it. Saved to El Sayed. Can't come up with it. Sandy has it. Still loose. Still loose. Brown comes up. The pull up. No, demanding the rebound. What a real opportunity there for La Tech. The three. Nothing but the bottom of the net for Jackson. His third of the ball game. And Fresno had to get Jack, Damon Jackson back into the game. They were just really struggling. The offensive end couldn't really get anything going. Nice sub. He comes in. Knocks down the three for you. Now another oh. turnover. Oh, yeah. You know, you shoot yourself in the foot again. Demanding, a couple of dribbles, gives it up to Sandy. He'll pull the trigger for three. Buries the three! Oh, my. And Rashard going to use his final timeout. A 7 one by Fresno State has cut that, or has uh, increased that five-point advantage back up to a dozen. Courtesy of the threes by Jackson, the three by Sandy. That'll get you back out in front of hurry, and that'll also get the... Uh, Boys, he had a Tech's attention. Well, I'll tell you, and, and that's, that's huge. <laughs> Forcing Coach Richard to call that timeout. Now you got no timeouts left. Uh, you better communicate that to your team because it's usually a situation like this where you go now the last 14 minutes, you make a run, get back in the game, and you always have a guy 
stop and call that timeout when they're falling out of bounds or whatever. <laughs> Better make sure those guys know that we are out of timeouts, fellas. Uh, that works two ways. That means we get back in this and it's under a minute. Don't call timeout. But most importantly, nice job putting up in transition. Damon Jackson, the three from the corner. And then again, Sandy just stepping right in. That's a no-doubter, folks. He just stepped right to it. He knew what he wanted to do with it when he caught it. But here it was, the nice penetration from Mitchell to kick out to the Mamby. And the three from the left wing. Fresno really starting to assert themselves now at the offensive end again. And, you know, all it took was a couple of turnovers, a couple of missed putbacks. And, uh, you know, you're, you're faced with these problems again. Well, the Mamby, two of five, all five of his shots have been from the out of the arc. He's hit a couple of threes, and you can see 47-35. Fresno State, good shape as far as timeouts. Louisiana Tech zero with 14, 20 play. Right, I'll be honest, in my 27 years of doing games, I don't think I've ever seen a team be out of timeout for over 14 minutes left in the ball game. Well, that's, just, that's a huge problem. That's a huge problem. You know, you're, you're obviously, I started to talk about it. If your guys kind of forget and call a timeout, it's going to cost you a technical foul. First thing. Second thing is, Fresno goes on another one of these runs. You can't stop it. you got to stay out yeah. there and you got to play through it. So, uh, you know, that's certainly going to put put you in the corner a little bit, your lot tech. But, you know, sometimes you have to take the technical just to stop the play and catch your breath, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Well, Miki, playing with three fouls, has done a nice job not picking up number four. Zach Johnson already on the bench with four for uh, Louisiana Tech. Yeah, and that's the other thing. You know, how long do you sit Zach Johnson now? He, he and Meeking together were very effective. Uh, you, you would have liked to have gotten him to about the eight-minute mark before you had to put him back in. Anderson out front, Brown. Looking inside, Meeking with the emphatic right-handed slam. A nice seal there to post up, and a nice pass from Brown. Lobbing it over the top. Good one-handed catch. Eight for Meeking in the ball game. Ten points, Fresno State advantage. To Mandy for three. Well off the mark, meeking the rebound. Only his third board of the ball game. You can see that middle still open. If they go down there to Meeking, he's got he can do some damage down there. Wilder penetration. El Sayed blocks it. Meeking inside and he does a little damage. Well, he's starting to get it going. Well, he's got his average of ten. And the lead is back to eight. Terrific young player, Antonio Michi. Sophomore, I believe. Gonna have a bright future in this league, folks. Farmerville, Louisiana. I'll say Ed Walker. He's got Dikembe Mutombo arms. Look at that. That goes down to the top of his kneecaps. Well, I tell you, on that post up and that jump hook, he does. He, he plays a lot like the. They're nice feel, nice catch. Pounding at home. And then stand on the glass, going in strong. Man it in. He's got his team right back in it now. And Jerry Tarkani is going to call the timeout. 13-12 to play in the ballgame. And it's going to be a full timeout. 47-39. Once again, the Louisiana Tech trailed by as many as 19 in the first half. They were only down by 9 in intermission. With 15-25 left in the ballgame, they cut it down to 5 at 40-35. to But then a 7-0 run by Fresno State up at the 47-35. Louisiana Tech is, as they say, dangerously hanging around if you're Fresno State. Yeah, they, if, if there's anything that makes you a little uncomfortable if you're Fresno State, it's the fact that you know, your team has played pretty well. Uh, uh, La Tech really has not played that well, yet you really can't seem to put them away. And, and, and if anything concerns you, that, that certainly would. Uh, but, you know, you got your big guy on the bench resting uh, for that last 10-minute push. And, uh, you know, if you can pick it up defensively, if you're Fresno pick it up defensively, uh, keep that ball out of the paint a little bit, uh, you know, you may have, a, have an opportunity. La Tech, you want to get ball to Antonio Meeting. He's doing some damage inside, and uh, you want to reward the big fella for working hard. Absolutely. You know, as well as Coach uh, Richard has done, he's never been invited to the NIT or the NCAA tournament. They haven't been to the big dance since 1988. You would hope with at least the NIT going up to 40 teams, you look down and you see a team 20 and 8 their first year in a tough conference like the WAC. You'd hope they'd get a bid to something at the end of this uh, tournament. Uh, well, you know, if they're, if they're unable to w come back and win and, and, and win this tournament, and, and uh, you know, that being the only option, I think they're a, t a terrific NIT team. Oh, they do too. Very entertaining. 
He's a fan of the and fans still travel well. 13 minutes to play in the ballgame. Louisiana Tech out of timeouts. Wilder three. Meeking offensive rebound. Put back. Brown tries it again, and he is fouled out of play. Well, in the first two meetings, this is something that Louisiana Tech was able to exploit. They were able to get to the offensive boards. And Meeking starting to assert himself on the offensive glass. Foul is on Noel Felix. That is his first personal foul. And at the line, it'll be Darian Brown on a West Memphis, Arkansas. Started his career in Mississippi. He was a member of the WAC newcomer team. Now 77% on the year from the line. This is his first trip uh, tonight. There's three in the ball game. 12.50 to play from the Reynolds Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Fresno State leading Louisiana Tech 47 to 40. Along with Brian Bailey O'Reilly, I'm Ron Thulin. Glad to have you with us today. Louisiana Tech matched up in a, in a soft man. Riley getting out the passing lane. Telegraph that pass and Brown with the emphatic slam. And the lead is up to five. Well, now Louisiana Tech is one with the bounce in their step. Eli sees the triple team, passes out of it. Jackson to Sandy. Eli quickly sees the double from Felton. Jackson hangs in the air. Difficult shot is going left, shot right. I'll tell you what, Louisiana Tech doing a good job now on the defensive end, recovering out of that double team. Meeting inside. Doesn't get the basket, but he does draw the foul. Louisiana Tech double teaming down there against Eli, doing a good job on their closeouts because Eli is finding guys on perimeter. You see here Brown with the dunk you very much at the other end. Transition, looking up at the crowd. We aren't ready to go home just yet, folks. Powers on Demandy. Meeking gets the first. 11 points in the ball game, and it is now a four-point advantage. They'll say it comes back into the lineup. Well, I tell you, folks, it's been a while since Louisiana Tech has seen this small uh, deficit. And, uh, oh, yeah. Their team's feeling it, and uh, they're playing pretty aggressively on the defensive end. Give them credit. Well, the 19-point lead went down to nine, went back up to 12. Now it is just three. Fresno State leads. This is the 2002 William Black Basketball Tournament Network. Now, held over by popular demand, the Chrysler Great American Getaway. Your chance to get away with great offers on our award-winning lineup, like our seven-year, 100,000-mile engine and transmission powertrain pledge. Cash allowances up to $2,500 or 0% financing on select minivans. GM, Ford, and Toyota don't give you all that. So hurry for great products, great protection, and great value. That's the Chrysler Advantage. already know the Bulldog Brewing Company is the home of award-winning microbrewed beer. But did you know the Bulldog Brewing Company also has a great menu? There's fresh seafood, steaks, pastas, salads, sandwiches, and specialty dishes. Bulldog's pizza is made from fresh ingredients and slowly roasted in their wood-fired oven. The Bulldog Brewing Company is a great place to relax with family or friends, have lunch or dinner, get into the game on TV, or just kick back on the patio. Fresh beer brewed here. The Bulldog Brewing Company. Fresno. Now you can see what Louisiana Tech has done the last two minutes and 12 seconds. A 9-0 run. That has got them right back in this basketball game, 47-44. Part of it because of this. Oh, just a great job. Nice seal there by Antonio Meeking. Wilder comes in after the block shot. Meeking grabs the offensive rebound. And then Louisiana Tech getting out in the passing lanes, giving Fresno a little bit of their own medicine. Brown goes down there, slams it home. And this, this Louisiana Tech team's... They're for real now. They're, they're, they're a little bit hopping their step. They're ready to hook it up. 
Talk about players stepping up in big games. Who will do it for Fresno State? Who will do it for Louisiana Tech? Sandy, the demandy. Melvin Eli sees the triple team again. Sandy, wide open look. And he hits the three. Okay, well, just a terrific find. Melvin Eli out of that double team. And uh, really, Ron Henson goes over and gets a good contest. But Sandy knocks down a big one. His club needed one. Knocks it down. You know what Eli does when a lot of big men don't? He keeps the ball up high. Never brings it down to his waist. You can understand him. Three shake down a bet. I never pass. <laughs> <laughs> nice job to the baseline by Henderson. That's what I heard. <laughs> Again, that's why I got a career in broadcasting. That's right. Melvin Eli inside. Let's draw the whistle and the foul. They'll have a choice now. I don't know why Brown came up and started mouthing to Eli. Yeah, Brown came over and started that with Eli. But really, yeah, more importantly, that's, that's why it's important when you double team, when you're going to come over and trap. But here, talking about Eli's passing ability. You see him looking for his teammates. Nice pass. Right to Sandy. He doesn't have to adjust, catch. He just catches and fires. But in, in, in double teams, you want to close off that double team and give Eli a gap, and he drops steps right through the gap and a foul, and Brown wanted to talk to him about it a little bit. Well, Clark wants to know what's going on. Melvin Eli will go to the line to shoot a pair. You can see what he's done as uh, far as points and rebounds. He has hit 8 out of 10 from the strike. Solid percentage as uh, Matt Mitchell comes back in. Chris Sandy's going to take a little breather. How big will it be that Louisiana Tech is out of timeouts if this game stays the way it is right now? Brown gets the miss. Five point advantage. Fresno State had it cut down to three just about a minute ago. Henderson inside. Brown leans. No. El Sayed had it and goes hard to the floor and just hits the back of his head. That had to hurt. But you can see he's going to take a lot better job of being aggressive off the dribble, getting into the gaps of that zone. El Sayed came down hard. Well, he, you could hear the back of his head hit. Brown picks up his fourth. Here it is again. Loses his balance. Bam. That was the back of his head hitting the floor. When you see that head snap back like that. Ten forty two to play. Well, he talks about the time now. That, if you keep the shot at this point, I don't think you worry yourself about it right now. You get, you get, your, get try to get the lead somehow. That's right. But, uh, you know, I don't think there's any question that uh, this gets down the last couple of minutes and they're fighting possession for possession. It really affects your, your, your clock management uh, when you don't have that. Because the clock only stops automatically uh, under a minute in, in college basketball. It doesn't stop every time the ball goes through. So you're losing time every time the ball goes through the basket. And they're going to take their time to make sure that Mustafa El Sayed is okay, the big sophomore out of Sudan. We're going to take a quick break. Fresno State leads by five, and hopefully El Sayed will get up and we'll be all right. We'll update you in a moment. Every day, millions of people count on Williams to power their lives, to find, store, manage, and move almost every form of energy from wherever it is to wherever it's needed. Cleanly, reliably, and efficiently. So to all those millions of people who count on Williams, now you know who's leading energy solutions. Center live action. El Sayed did get up under his own power. Was a little bit wobbly. He is sitting down the end of his bench. As soon as we get an update on his condition, we'll pass it on to you. 
Mitchell, nice pump fake to the hole, and he gets the roll. But a good job in that trap. Melvin Eli doesn't get rushed, doesn't try to force anything. Waits for his teammate to free up, and then Mitchell doesn't rush anything. He brings it right back and attacks the rim. Nice job on the offensive presence. Meeking goes baseline. They try to cut it off, but Hiram Fuller commits the infraction. Well, they're uh, making sure that uh, Mustafa El Sayed knows what, the, what day it is. He probably hears a phone ring and he just can't find it. <laughs> we just hope he's okay, but uh, I think what scares us is he's limping. And he's going to go to the locker room. He came down on his back and his head. Meeking gets the free throw. That's a legitimate 6 11 too, folks. That's a long yeah. way to go. Once again, if we get an update, and hopefully we will, we'll pass it on to you. Meeking gets them both. Meeking now with 13 in the ball game, and the lead is back down to five as we are halfway home here in the second half. I'll tell you what, the junior, Antonio Meeking, you gotta, you gotta really love this guy's effort. He's just saddled with a ton of foul trouble in the first half. Has come out and the best player on the floor right now. So he picked up that third foul, if I'm not mistaken, just about 3.43 left in the first half. Keith Richard decided to stay with him. It's been a good choice so far. Jackson, quick catch and shoot. Not a very high percentage shot. A little bit of a fade. Didn't get those feet set before he pulled the trigger. Five point lead. Of course, Tulsa Boise State coming up straight ahead after this one. Henderson, this spin, he buries the jumper. I tell you, I just, I love the way this guy plays. He's got a big time game. It's down. He'll take the big shot. It doesn't, not worried about it. Very confident. Love the way Gerard Henderson plays. Three point advantage for Fresno State. Mitchell looking for Fuller on the inside. Pass it to nobody in particular. 14 to shoot. Eli sees the double again, splits it, did he walk with double it? Dribble. No, double dribbled it. Bounced it on the catch, and then set himself and tried to get away with another one. Now well, he sees the triple team, not a double team. He is seeing a triple, Brian. It, yeah, it, it ran, yeah. Two and a half, three, two and three quarters. They're helping down from the wing. They're coming over from the wheel side. Pretty much student body, I think. A chance to pull within one or tie the game. It has been a long time coming for this Louisiana Tech team. They have fought hard. Wilder inside. Meeking can't get the money shot to go. Great contest, Melvin Eli. And Brown has just fouled out of the ball game. That'll be his fifth personal foul. Now you got to wonder that come with Zach Johnson at this point. 8.33 to go. You need a presence down low. Say, if you were ever, well, here's again, let's take a look at that foul once again. It, uh, it's kind of a, a an oops foul. Kind of an excuse me. <laughs> yep, oops, 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 oops. Kind of a heady played the man sees that, sees that Brown's going to be coming up the court. Maybe he doesn't, knows that he doesn't see him, and he just kind of hangs there and waits for the contact. I have your Keith Richard. The situation... There's one that you probably say, gee, Mrs. Lincoln, outside of that, how did you enjoy the play? You're out of timeouts. You're down by three. Your two big guys are in foul trouble. You just lost Barry and Brown. Besides that, it's a beautiful day in Tulsa. And Zach Johnson comes in with four fouls. Marco Cole's been sitting now for a little while. They still have they still have Marco Cole over there. Jackson, another shot quickly taken. I'm surprised Clark is leaving him in. Job Johnson on that rebound, not showing any shyness, going in there, not worried about the foul. Get the board. Anderson the high. Okay, I tell, the I tell you what, that guy is big time, folks. First team all whack performer. Just had a terrible first half. Has just come out. He's a different guy. Stars have a tendency of uh, elevating to the competition in games like this. Eli sees the double. Mitchell for two. No. Kicked around. Rebound controlled by Jackson. Back to Mitchell. Jackson will fire up the deuce to this guy. That's the three, and he hits it. I tell you, they just are starting to answer one another. In the playground, I can do that, too. But really, a, a big opportunity there. Louisiana Tech not able to secure the defensive board. Would have been their first opportunity to lead since 4-0. 
The leader, yes, for Wilder. Well, he's just been terrific. He's, I, I think he's the reason that Louisiana Tech, even though they were playing so poorly, were able to hang around. He was able to get into the lane and really keep them close. Keith Richard's team does not give up. 7.06 to play. They trail by two. This is the 2002 William Black Basketball Tournament Network. More. Is that more of a good thing or a bad thing? Sure, it's a bigger bucket, but look what's in it. Two for one. Do you even want one? Check it out. Subway Value Meals are fresh made, so you don't just get more. You get more great taste. And now at Subway for just $10.99, get three delicious footlong sandwiches. That's three feet of delicious fresh made taste for just $10.99. With tasty meats and toppings on fresh baked bread for just $10.99. This is such a good deal, I'm going to let you treat. Subway, eat it fresh. If you or a loved one ever faces cancer, the last thing you need is a long ride to Stanford for advanced treatment. Fortunately, university-level cancer care is right here. Community medical centers, there's no better place to be. A new breakthrough procedure called vascular brachytherapy goes a long way to help heart patients recover. And now, you don't have to go far to receive it. Community medical centers, there's no better place to be. Roadside technicians are dedicated, very, very dedicated. The E-Class comes with roadside assistance for the life of the car, service unlike any other. 706 to play in the ballgame. Fresno State leading by two. For those of you who just joined us, they led by as many as 19 in the first half. Just a moment ago, about 54 seconds ago, Louisiana Tech cut it for one. At 53-52, Melvin Eli, who had 13 first-half points, only has two here in the second half. Both of those on free throws because he has seen the double team 99.9% of the time. Well, I mean, trying to kick it out and get his teammates uh, some shots. They just really have not knocked down the the jumper. I think they kind of need Fresno to use both post players, so even go into Fuller a little bit. Go at Johnson. Make him guard. He's got four fouls. Eli with a little jump hook. Fuller had it, lost it, and is fouled out of play. And if it's on Zach Johnson, it's goodbye, Zach. No, they're not calling it on Johnson. He got lucky. He's on Henderson. What a good job. Just reestablish our focus. Hey, let's go into the low post. Let's go to the player of the year in the whack. Go right down there to Eli. Gets a nice, easy one. Not able to convert it, but Fuller getting to the glass. Not a good free throw shoot. Very unorthodox shot. You know, I was going to ask you when I saw you like hit it. Just put it right down through the middle. Yeah, I know you faced me there. <laughs> I was going to ask you, they always do. I was going to ask you about Melvin Eli. You know, if you have a star, sometimes you can get too unselfish. And is Melvin Eli at times too unselfish? Well, I would imagine someone in that hole told him that very thing. Hey, big fella, you got to take it. You can't be looking to get 10 assists in this deal. Yeah. We're better when you get 25 points. Three point lead for the tie. Eli the rebound. Seven rebounds now for Melvin Eli. Mitchell looking inside to Fuller. Eli trying to work on meeting on the left block. Off balance shot. Nothing but net for Jackson. Well, I tell you what, it was a tough move. He made a, made a really tough shot. And it's real important that you make that because your 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 big fella stand there on the box looking for the basketball. But a tough shot. Nice finish for Daniel Jackson. Wilder. Up top to Henderson, just about six minutes left. Felton. Baseline. Everybody's taller than him down there. Wilder scoops Eli. We'll give him a block at it, but he didn't even have to jump. Well, he's, right there, he's bringing it, baby. He's, he's bringing it in there. You're right. Eli looked right at him, then looked at him after it went out of bounds. Like, are you crazy, man? <laughs> well, the TV timeouts are helping Keith Richard. 5.50 to play in the ballgame. This team had pulled it in one. Now they are down by five. 59-54. Winner, of course, advances to the semifinal number two tomorrow night at 8.30. And a couple of highlights from this game. Now they got getting down into the paint. Mitchell off the double team. And there has been Gerard Henderson picking up for his team. 
We are just great blows, folks. Well, Jackson with the last basket. You can't say enough about Keith Richard and the job he has done. He has got his back against the wall, has been from just about the, the five-minute mark of this game, and uh, uh, he has done a marvelous job keeping his team head above water. By the way, quick update on uh, Mustafa El Sayed. Lower back bruise. He is doubtful to return. Well, you alluded to it before, you know, with La Tech not playing that well, is Fresno, is Fresno going to be concerned about them hanging around? Well, you know, I think that's an emphatic yes. Yeah. No, you got it. You have that opportunity. You got to put them away. La Tech, a good basketball team. And once they kind of figured out how they were going to score and attack that zone, uh, they've been able to pick up the offensive production and really just done a better job taking care of the basketball. And, and Fresno has struggled a little bit offensively in this half, and uh, now you got a ball game. Well, the offensive rebounds, La Tech who has uh, been very good on the boards throughout the year, no question about it. Uh, they're obviously controlling it, but the problem is they haven't made those count at times. Well, in the second half, they've started too. Antonio Meeking had a couple putbacks, but certainly you want to continue to attack that offensive class because, uh, you know, for some reason, maybe because those big guys get out on the floor and have to guard in that zone defense, they're able to get to that glass uh, against this big Fresno front line. Well, the uh, Louisiana Tech Bulldogs led the whack in rebounding margin, plus 8.4. Meeking, another one to the hole. Doesn't get it, but he does draw the whistle and the foul. And that's going to be on Hiram Fuller. I'll tell you what, Antonio Meeking working in the inside, doing a good job throwing that body around. Does a good job moving the ball on the, on the jump shot to keep Fuller from blocking it and draws the contact. Gets a couple of free throws. Uh, three for four now from the stripe. He has 13 points in the ball game. Chris Sandy will come back into the ball game. Fuller is going to take a quick seat. Noel Felix, the junior out of Los Angeles, number 12, back in for Fresno State. Meekin gets the second. Well, and we talk, I talked about turnovers. La Tech only one turnover this half. Had 12 in the first half. Only had one turnover. So there it is. When you take care of the basketball, you get more chances to score, and they're taking advantage. Jackson lets the three go. Controlled by Henderson. Seven rebounds left for Henderson, and he is bowled over by Demandy. He's a little too quick on that jumper by Jackson. Take that shot too quick. You don't allow your big guys to get position on the glass and uh, uh, just kind of puts one up. Had an open look. Mm -hmm. Doesn't get it to go and Latex able to go the other way with it. Who's done that a couple of times today? He's been playing great basketball for this Fresno team though. Averaging about 20 a game in his last three or four. About 17 a game since the injury to Jeffries and uh, has really stepped up his game. But you got to be, you got to be smart. You gotta right. be able to take advantage. Uh, force that defense to move a little bit so you can get to that offensive glass. Henderson. This one's always the hardest. 17 now for Henderson, 12 here in the second half. And he's been the Fresno killer. 28 last week against the uh, Fresno State. 24 out in California. And he cuts that lead back down to a deuce. 59, 52, five and a half to play in the ball game. Well, this kind of game we thought we were going to have. Yep. Uh, we thought this was going to be a day one. This was going to be the big matchup. Uh, it hasn't gone the way we thought it would go, but uh, this is certainly the last, the way that we thought the last five minutes would go. Eli being hugged by Meeking, and Meeking's going to pick up his fourth. You know, they've been allowing him to wrestle, though, and I don't blame Antonio Meeking because uh, watching them the last four or five trips down the court, they've been, they've been pretty much mugging each other. Well, you see there, you got that right arm right oh, there. there it is. Yeah, he, you know, he that's good when you're at the movies with your girlfriend. That's not so <laughs> good when you're trying to defend in the post. you got to be careful down there. <laughs> you got three, and that's, yeah. that, that's an easy one. Well, he cupped his hand around him. I think that's what got him. Yeah, yeah. Eli, 9 of 12. That was the worst-looking free throw he's had. Missed his last two now. And the lead remains at two, closing in on five minutes to play. Fresno State, no timeouts. It's been that way for the last nine minutes. Well, Francis say Louisiana Tech, no timeouts. Lachette's done a good job against Melvin Eli, even in the first half when he was scoring. They were forcing out to the 8 10 foot range. Don't let me catch it right in there on the box. Wilder lost it, but he was fouled by Seamus down the play. Number two, Noel Felix. 
and a huge hurdle here. You knock down two free throws here, you are tied. It has been a long time since the Louisiana Tech has seen that. And they led 4 nothing. That was the last time they led. We've gotten within one at 53-52. That was about three minutes ago. And they're within one now. Gets three because he was attempting the three, and now first tie of the ball game at 59. Well, my bad. my bad on that. I thought he was passing and a rebound for oh! Johnson. Zach Johnson with the rebound and the putback. So the first lead is four nothing for Louisiana Tech. All the things that have gone wrong for Louisiana Tech tonight, now they lead by two with five minutes. Eli just steps through the defense. That's a big time move. Well, that's it. Now, the last five minutes, you got to get it done. You got to step through. No more kicking it out, out of that trap. You got to find a way to get the bucket. Big players got to step up now. Henderson gets a step on Felix, slips and falls, and he's called for the travel. Sure was. Got to that baseline. Yeah. Good job getting to that yeah, baseline. Right. Didn't have anybody coming over. You got to have that big guy flash over against that zone because the up the two big guys are coming out and trapping in the baseline. Didn't have anybody come over and slip and fell. Tied at 61, the second tie of the ball game. It has been uphill for the Bulldogs and Louisiana Tech. Great job tonight. They are man to man in that low post. Two guys with four fouls. Eli gives it up. Sandy, the double clutch. Bank will go. Sip will go. Felix over the back, got away with one. <laughs> Fresno Bench yelling out of bounds. Rod Henderson puts his hand on his mouth, says, quiet now. Wilder to three, the rainbow, no. Rebound snatched away by Felix. Tied at 61. Jackson has a coach checked out by Henderson. We've got a time out of the floor. 3.37 to go. We are tied at 61. This is the 2002 William Black Basketball Tournament Network. Soda. Don't bother me. I'm eating. The Charbroiled Superstar at Carl's Jr. Thinking about painting your car? Stop thinking, do it. Mako's still offering the Ambassador Paint Service for only $189, the best economy paint service in America. How do we do it? Mako paints more cars than anyone. 12 million, still counting. And that's why we charge less than anyone. Our Ambassador Paint Service is only $189. Mako gets more value than anyone. What's value? Quality and price. For a great finish and a beautiful deal, call 1-888-MAKO-USA. If you've been shocked, even dropped by your insurance company, now is the time to find a new home at our new home. Come see us at our new office, where our goal is to get you insured at a fair price. Cost less reliable insurance. Alley wide with our new, more convenient Shaw location in Fresno. Sibmates, two strangers stuck together for three days, two nights, one date, no escape. This isn't how it ends. Yeah, baby, Sibmates. Weeknights at 10 on K3 WB59. Well, with Brian Riley, I'm Ron Thulin, welcoming you back to the Reynolds Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where we've got a shootout going on between Louisiana Tech and Fresno State. Todd is 61 with 3.37 to play. Fresno State not good in close ball games. They're 1-5 in five and games decided by 5 or less. 0-3 oh when the game is decided by 3 points. And you can see Louisiana Tech's been out of timeouts since 14 minutes left in the half. Both teams at 18 fouls. And uh, you mentioned during the timeout, Brian, I hope Coach Richard told his players, remember, we don't have any timeouts. Don't call it. Call it on the floor. Sandy, wide open, look at the three, buries the three. Got to close out out of that double team. His fourth trifecta tonight. Felton slow on that closeout, let Sandy get a good look, and he buries it on him. That's a big time shot. 
Inside Wilder with a drive. He's just been there all night. Michael Wilder been the most consistent player on the floor for Louisiana Tech tonight. Getting to the basket, putting it on the floor, being strong with the dribble. Louisiana Tech had the lead of 61-59. Falling out of a 19-point first-half deficit. Now they're again down by one. Sandy gives it up, got away with one. Jackson over to Mandy. Sandy, wide open look and doesn't get this one. Wilder takes the rebound away from Felix. A little bit of a soft man-to-man -man there by Louisiana Tech. They lost Sandy in the corner. He had a wide open look. No, he's kicking himself. He had a nice look. Wide open. Well, so, everything we've expected. Uh, taking us a while to get here. <laughs> it's everything we've expected. Henderson. Three, three from the NBA. Three rebounded, controlled by Fresno State. 152 to play in the ball game. This would be a huge emotional win for this Fresno State team. Eli sees the double again, patiently waiting. Sandy again for three in the corner, and he hits another one. Well, I tell you what, this is a pass. I mean, this guy, he finds him on the opposite corner, drills it to him, and Sandy doesn't have to make a great catch now. That sucker hits him right in the chest. He tees it up. He said, I'm not going to let this one go, baby. Seven's gone. Oh, 17 points, 14 in the second half. Henderson. No, rebound, put back, Johnson with the deuce. This would love to have that timeout if your team was trying to set your defense and then set your yeah. set play on the offensive end. They do not have that luxury now. 60 seconds left. The lead is two. See Richard over there trying to communicate to his guys. 17 on the shot clock. Eli, the jumper. Oh, yes! Melvin Eli with only his second field goal in the second half. Well, you just can't keep a good man down. And no timeout to set anything up. And you're just you're on your own. Get it done, fellas. Henderson draws the whistle and the foul. Eli just put his big hands up. And he may be the culprit. That is his third personal foul. What well, a nice job. Having a tough time getting things set, but sets the screen, fades, knocks down that jump shot. Really, the only good looks he's been able to get are at 10, 12 feet. Give Louisiana yeah. Tech some credit, but he knocks down a big one there. Stretch it back out to four. 19 points, seven assists, five or seven rebounds, five assists for Eli Henderson. Two for two from the strike tonight. Well, if he has had some teammates knocking down some Peter Jays, yeah. he might have eight or nine assists. He plans for that triple double. Or the worst thing that Chuck has to see is shipping into the lead with the clock stop. Especially the team out of timeout. That's huge. Good decision by Rod Henderson to attack yeah. off the dribble. Try to draw a foul. Three point difference. Shot of the game clock. Two point advantage for Fresno State. Sandy almost carried it. But Jerry Tarkani wants to call a timeout. So he has one timeout remaining. And they're calling it a 30-second timeout. Well, I don't think there's any. He's got to take a rocket of time to figure out what the Fresno State plan is going to be. Yeah. Say, so, hey, you know, this big kid number 33 is pretty good. Give him the ball. <laughs> I think he can play. Give him the ball. Now, they'll say yet he's come back out onto the team bench limping, but he is doubtful with that uh, bruised back after that tremendous fall. There's big uh, Mustafa El Sayed. His status for tomorrow, I'm sure, is still very doubtful if they do make it that far. You got to figure if they get a chance, if they get the opportunity, they win this. Well, you heard one of the players, one of the coaches, yelling, "Don't give up! Don't give up!" Keith Richard team hasn't had that problem. They haven't given up. They could have fixed the tent and hit back to Louisiana about an hour ago. Oh, I tell you, I, folks, it was going bad there for a while. Oh, I mean, there's nothing that they could do that worked. And, uh, you know, they hung around, hung around. A lot of Michael Wilder penetration, keeping them close. Antonio Meekin comes out, has a super second half, and they're right back in the game. And it's uh, it's been a dandy for the last five minutes. Sort of indicative of the conference when Louisiana Tech is done. Great effort tonight. 28 seconds on the shot clock, 30 on the game clock. Jackson better hurry up. He's got some problems. 
And they call a foul. Peter Shark telling him, no, that was not a foul. I think it was on Wilder. Yeah, not sure who this foul was on. And they're calling it on Henderson. That'll be his third, and at the line, it'll be Jackson. 80% free throw shooter, his first trip tonight. He is not a guy you want to foul and put at the line. He makes this one, and, and the reason I takes in some serious yeah. trouble unless they can get a turnover. Once again, they can't call a timeout after not this. Not stop that clock. 17 points now for Jackson. Big miss. Makes it only a three-point game. Final 25 seconds. Still one possession. Like to see them attack the rim, get the two, then foul on the inbounds, make them make some free throws. Wilder. Two dribbles. Gives it up. Henderson. Ten seconds. Pulls the trigger. The shot. And it goes, and it's a two. What was on the line? And foul. They have to foul on the inbound. And Sandy is fouled on the play, but Henderson said, wait a minute, that was a three, but his foot was right on the line, I think. The official was right there. It is the worst two-point shot you can take in basketball, folks. There oh, it is. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see if he elevates. Oh, yeah. Oh, folks, if he's a size 10 and a half, that's three. That's right. He's a 13, so that's only going to be worth two for him. But you get two, you get the quick foul, force them to make some free throws. Even if he makes them both, even if he makes them both, you're only at one possession. Knock down the three, try to get to overtime. Foul, by the way, was on Henderson. That was his fourth personal foul. They're saying, go ahead and let Sandy shoot. Well, it's, it's a... Double bonus. It's a double bonus, yeah. Very crafty by Tark. You noticing that before anybody else did. Now his players will come back to the line. What a great second half by Sandy. Louisiana Tech only 1 and 8 this season when opponents break the 70 mark. They are undefeated under 70, 17 and 0. Fresno State just went over that 70 mark. Those last two were huge with regards to that yeah. stat. And you think they didn't miss Chris Sandy, folks. Yeah, you, you're taking a lot of points out of the lineup. Clark is going to bring his final timeout. Well, he's going to give a timeout to yeah. Richard to let him set his last play. I'm kind of surprised. I mean, he had the timeout when Sandy was shooting. You think he would have gotten that and forced them to move the ball full court. A little different than NBA, though, where you can't see where you can take it out of midcourt. Advance that yeah. sucker. Now you've got to do it. Now set, here's here's that your defense. Now it's a three-point game. You guard the inbound pass and force them to try to take some time off the clock. Oh, there's no question. You got to pick them up, extend that defense a little bit, make them eat some time. Uh, but you're in a containment phase. You're not out there. You don't want to get beat right off the dribble and let them have the open three right at the buzzer. You get, you're in containment, kind of. Train of thought. You want to you get out there and pressure, make him pick that ball up, and then you're going to drop with him and make him shoot over. Now, make the first shoot over defender. Well, the first thing that Louisiana Tech has to worry about is getting the ball inbounds if indeed Fresno State pressures him because they are out of timeouts. Yeah, I don't think we're going to, I don't think Fresno will be, you'll see Fresno trying to de deny the ball inbounds. You just want to make them pick it up and put it on the floor. Here we go. Final five seconds, three to tie. Henderson for the tie. Air ball, and that'll do it. Fresno State has pulled off the upset. Hey, hang on. And Jerry Tarkanian will coach another day. Keith Richard's team did everything it possibly could to win this basketball game. Coming back from a 19-point deficit, out of timeouts with 14 minutes to play. But they fall short, 72-69. to 69. Melvin Eli leading the way. With 19 points, along with Chris Sandy, also at 19. We'll step aside when we come back. We'll talk to the winners. Don't forget, Tulsa, Boise State, still straight ahead. Now, held over by popular demand, the Chrysler Great American Getaway. Your chance to get away with great offers on our award-winning lineup, like our seven-year, 100,000-mile engine and transmission powertrain pledge. Cash allowances up to 2500 or 0% financing on select minivans. GM, Ford, and Toyota don't give you all that. 
So hurry for great products, great protection, and great value. That's the Chrysler Advantage. I'm Tom Wells, South Valley reporter for KMPH News Radio. When news happens in Kings and Tulare County, count on KMPH News Radio 107.5 FM and the 10 o'clock news. I'm J.D. McCliver of the KMPH 10 o'clock news, the Valley's only primetime newscast, inviting you to stay up to date all day long with KMPH News Radio 107.5 FM. I'm so excited. I'm going to wear this shirt on the plane to Hawaii, this one in Honolulu, this one in Maui. Hi, I'm just picking out my favorite Hawaiian shirts for our big seven-day cruise to the Hawaiian Islands this coming August. Cruise with me. First Value Travel has put together this great seven-day Hawaiian Island cruise with me. August 4th through the 11th for only $1,564 per person. How much? $1,564. Now that's incredible. That includes round-trip airfare from Los Angeles. We board the Norwegian Star for our cruise to Paradise, embarking from Honolulu, then off Dakota, Banning Island, Lahaina, Nawili Wili, and back to Honolulu. And don't forget all the fun and food on board the Norwegian Star, August 4th through the 11th. Call 1-800-766-8264. Aloha! Call First Value today, and you too will be saying... <laughs> And welcome back to the Reynolds Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Our third semifinalist has been decided. Fresno State, an exciting 72-69 win over Louisiana Tech. Brian standing by with Elvin Eli and Jerry Tarkanian. Gentlemen. Well, thanks, Ron. I am in here. First, I want to talk to Mr. Eli, player of the year in the WAC this year. Had a tough night tonight. They did a good job coming down and double teaming. Forced you to kick it out. Had some tough, had some guys having a tough time on perimeter, knocking out shots, but you're able to get through it and hit the big one under a minute to go. Yeah, you know, uh, all the teams have been doubling on the similar team, and uh, we've been working on that, and you know, our coaches prepared to score it, but uh, the, the guys went out, and, and, and then they played well, and they hit the ones that count. Well, uh, certainly, uh, defensively, I kind of felt like coach had you out on the floor. You're getting out 20, 30 feet away, pressure in the basketball. He asked you guys to do a lot. You're hanging in there physically. Yeah, you know, the, for us, uh, our season went kind of slow for us, but uh, the tournament is a new season for us. Uh, we're here to win three games and nothing else. Yeah, I'm sure you are. You possibly got a matchup maybe with Tulsa. If they're able to get through Boise, got maybe that matchup with Tulsa, probably looking for a little revenge. Yeah, uh, you know, right, right now, there's no revenge. We just need to go out there and play hard. Uh, we need to go out there with a clear mind and, and, and just play and, and just play with 100%. Uh, we go out there and we play with 110%. You know, team, it's going to be hard to beat us. All right, franchise, get some rest. you got to go again tomorrow. Coach, you know, you had them on the edge there early, and, and you let those teams hang around. Those make coaches nervous. I do a little coaching. I know that feeling felt for you over there, but you guys able to hang on. Our defense for the first 15 minutes was sensational. Then they started thinking it's the beast. I think we wore down physically there, and they started getting some pretty good shots. Yeah, they did a good job. I kind of felt like getting to the offensive glass on you. You got you a little bit extended. Your closeouts maybe a little bit uh, less effective uh, in the second half. And then Antonio Meekin, certainly a great job getting to the offensive boards on you. They're big and strong, so they, they, they were on you. Well, congratulations, Coach. Good luck tomorrow. We'll see you. There it is, Coach Tarkani and Melvin Eli. Back to you, Ron. All right. Henderson paced Louisiana Tech with 22 points in the ballgame as they put four players in double figures. Eli finished with 19 points and uh, seven rebounds, five assists. Say finishes with 19 points and three assists. Jackson, the only other Fresno State Bulldog in double figures, ends up with 17 points. They advanced to the semifinals against the Golden Hurricane of Tulsa. Of course, Tulsa set to take on Boise State. That'll be coming up in just a couple of minutes. But the bottom line, and I think Melvin Eli put it the best, this is another season. Forget about what we did during the regular season. We're here to win three games. Well, one of those is in the books. They'll have to wait until tomorrow night at 8.30 Central Time to find out if they can take the second step. Once again, the final score, Tulsa, or I should say, Fresno State defeats Louisiana Tech 72-69. For Brian Riley, I'm Rob Doolin. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in our next game.